Now, in the next couple of verses, we have another section to look at. Second, we want to follow him persistently. Persistently. We've looked at verses 11 and 12. Now look what he says in verse 13. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a very long sentence, which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. You go, whew, that was a long sentence. Paul, what are you trying to say? He says, well, one of the things I want you to know is I want you to be persistent. I want you to keep knocking on that door. Said, but nobody answers that door. I, I don't want you to quit. But there is something very important here that we have been called to a work. He says, I charge you to, in the presence of God who gives life to all things in Jesus Christ. So he invokes God the Father. He invokes the Son, Jesus Christ. And then he goes into a detail about Jesus Christ. He says, in Jesus Christ, in his testimony before Pontius Pilate, he made a good confession. Remember when Jesus was giving testimony, he, he said very few words. They were making all kinds of accusations against him. He let his life speak for himself. He said a few words to confirm the life and the faith and the relationship with God that he was. But he says he kept it. He was persistent. He didn't give up. And he kept going forward. He says, I want you in the presence of God and his son Jesus Christ not to quit, not to give up. Timothy, I know you don't feel well. I know you're sick. I know you feel insecure. I know you feel like nobody respects you in these churches anymore. But be persistent. Continue in the work that, he, that I have given you to do. I think of the words that Jesus said when he said this, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Sometimes Christians get the notion that because I'm a Christian, everything should go great. Life is great. You know, if I'm a, if, if I'm a, become a Christian, if I become part of your church, my life is going to be wonderful. And I say, I'm sorry, I can't promise that. In fact, what I can tell you is that your life will probably get more difficult. Things will get harder, that the attacks of the enemy and the things against you is going to get more complicated and more difficult. But you must persist. Don't quit. And don't give up. The second thing, or the third point, actually, in addition to persistence, but still in that long, that long section of verses we read, is this. What we do, we do passionately. We're not just persistent. We are passionate. You say, where do you get that? Remember how I've told you that when Paul writes a letter, sometimes he just breaks out into praise. Sometimes he just can't contain himself anymore, and he just breaks into this explosion of praise and worship. That's what these instructions end up doing. Like in verse 15, he says, which he will display at the proper time. He was the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's beginning to exalt. He's beginning to praise. This who alone has immortality. He lives forever. He's always been. He always will be. Who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Paul just breaks out in praise. He is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's immortal. He lives in this unapproachable light. That if anyone on this earth would ever see God in all of his glory, we'd, we'd be vaporized just like that. Our eyes can't look at him. He's holy. We are not. We are being purified. But one day we shall see him as he is. To him be honor and might and glory and power forever. To him. Let me give an example. Sometimes when, when people meet our four children or they spend a little bit of time with them, they say, oh, Bruce and Trudy, you have such wonderful children. They're so polite. They have such wonderful manners. They're so, they're so respectful. And Trudy and I will look at each other and go, boy, I'm glad that's the impression you got. Because sometimes they're not that way at home. But what they're saying is this. We honor you as their parents because of the way that children act. 
We honor you as their parents because you must have trained them to live in this particular way. When Paul says at the end of this praise, he said, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. He's saying to God be the glory, to God be the honor, that, that the honor that he has when the church lives in harmony and unity and is fighting off the false teaching and is pursuing Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ, he goes, the honor goes to him. The eternal dominion is his. So my advice to you is this, pursue him actively. Don't be afraid. Don't be passive. The battle is already won. Jesus Christ has defeated sin and death. Second, be persistent. Keep going forward. Even when sometimes you go backwards, keep going forward again. Go backwards, go a little bit forward again. And third, pursue him with passion. The gospel message changes people's lives. It transforms people's lives. One day we're going to see him face to face. We have a hymn that you probably sing too in Russian, but in English it goes like this. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Paul could have written the words to that song because that's an expression of what he has just said here. Well, that brings us to the end of verse 16. We have one short section left before we finish the first letter. Paul has given Timothy all kinds of instructions, encouragements, admonitions. He's been pushing him now. When we come back, we're going to see how he finishes his final instructions to Tim Timothy before he says farewell. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed over 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at www.tvseminary.com. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.